Welcome. In the last video, we talked about how data is represented inside of the computer, how the alternation of electrical current gets converted to bits, which either have a value of 0 or 1. In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about that, and we're going to be focusing more on the binary number system. How do we convert numbers from the decimal number system to the binary number system? and vice versa. And then we'll talk about the hexadecimal number system, which is another number system that it's good to be aware of when you are programming. So let's get started. So the number system that we use in our everyday lives is called the decimal number system or the base 10 number system. Let's look at something very simple about the base 10 number system. When we start counting in our regular number system, we start with zero, right? And then we, from there we go to one, two, three, four, five, six, so on until we get to number nine. When we get to number nine, we no longer have a digit to represent the next number. There is nothing that can, with one character, represent the number 10. So what we do next is we add another digit to the left of it and starting from the beginning, and the right digit starts again from zero. And then we begin to count again the same way. We keep doing so until we get to the number 19. After that, we do the same thing. We count up the left digit, and the right digit starts all over from 0 again. And if we continue to do this all the way to 99, what we get is that the number 100, which will start a new digit on the left, and the two digits that were 9 get reset back to 0. Essentially, this is how we count in, in decimal number system. Okay, so, so far so good. What do we do when we have the base 2 number system? We do the exact same thing with the binary number system. We have the 0, so we start with 0. Then after that, we increment by 1, and we go to 1. When we try to increment by 1, we no longer can represent the next number, which is 2, with one digit. So we add another digit starting from 1, and we reset the right digit. Then when we go to 3, we can simply increment the right digit, which will go to 1, and we keep the same on the left. We can no longer increment the right digit without affecting the left digit and anything like that, so we will have to add another digit and reset the 1s back to zeros. When we go to 5, we do 1, 0, and we increment the right digit by 1. When we go to 6, we can still do that, we keep the 1. We increment this by 1, we can no longer go up, so this goes 0, and then the next digit goes up by 1. Then we go to 7, and it would be 1, 1, 1. We can continue following this same process, going down to the next numbers all the way to infinity, just like we would do with the normal decimal number system. Okay, what if we wanted to convert a base 10 to a base 2? It is not intuitive for us to just think of a base 2 number system. Just, you know, we, we're not used to it. So you would most likely think of the number in base 10, and if you need to convert it to binary, then you would do so manually. So let's take a look at a quick example. Let's suppose that I want to divide the value 6. In order to do that, I have to divide 6 by 2. Base 2 will require that you divide every number that you want to convert by 2. So 2 goes into 6 3 times, and it leaves you a remainder of 0. What you do next is you take the quotient here, the number 3, and now you divide that quotient by 3, by 2. So this would be 3 divided by 2. 2 goes into 3 one time and gives you a remainder of 1. Then you do that again. You take, you take the quotient and you divide it by 2. This right here. And you do 1 divided by 2. And you will realize that the 2 does not go in the 1 any time, so it goes 0 and gives you a remainder of 1. You stop when the quotient has reached 0. Once you have that, the sequence of 1s and zeros, the sequence of the remainder is going from right to left will be the sequence that it's represented in base 2. So notice we have 1, 1, 0, which is equivalent to 6 as we have written it here. So 6 in binary would be 1, 1, 0. Let's do another example, number 4. 4 divided by 2. You can put 2 in 4 two times, and it gives you a remainder of 0. Then you take the quotient and divide it by 2 again, which fits in 1's, gives you a remainder of 0. Then you divide the 1 by 2, which goes in 0 times, and gives you a remainder of 1. The sequence of bits going from right to left would be the answer 
to the conversion. In this case, 4 would be 1, 0, 0, which just so happens to be 4. Okay, what if you wanted to do the number 10,947? Would you have to do this? Well, it is definitely one way to do it, but I'm going to teach you a little trick in a bit. But let's now look at conversion from base 2 to base 10. Let's take the value 4 in binary. In order to do this conversion, let me give you the following observation. Let's look at the bit sequence 1. You will notice that 1 is equal to 1, which is equal to to the 0 power. Now let's look at 1, 0. 1, 0 is equal to 2, as we've shown here on this table over here. And 2 is equal to 2 to the first power. Now let's look at 1, 0, 0. That is 4, as we've also shown on the table. And that is 2 to the second power. And the last one, as you can imagine, it would be 1, 0, 0. And that is equal to 8, which is 2 to the third power. Using this observation, I can show you that the first digit shown here has a, an equivalence of 2 to the 0 power. The next one has a value of 2 to the first power, and the next one has a value of 2 to the second power, and if we had more digits, it would continue that same trend. Okay, with using these values, then we can compute what the decimal equivalence of this bit sequence is. So for example, we first look at the first bit, and we, what we'll see is that it is on. So therefore, we need 2 to the second power. Plus, we will also see that the second bit is also on, so we will take 2 to the first power, plus, and we will see that this last bit is 0, so we do not need to uh, take an, into account for that, so I will not add anything for that. And what we end up with is 4 plus 2, which is equal to 6, which indeed, as we have shown here, is 1, 1, 0. Okay, let's do one more example. Let's take the binary number 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. The corresponding powers of 2 would be 2 to the 0 power for the first digit, which is a 1, 2 to the first power, which is a 2, then 2 to the second power, 4, then 8, then 16, 32, 64. Notice that you do not really need to memorize any of these, as it is just doubling the previous value. Once we have that, we'll add all the powers of 2 thus correspond to a 1 in our binary number. In this case, it would be 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 2 plus 1, which is equivalent to the value 115. This is what you would have to do in order to convert a binary number to a decimal number. Now, now that you know about the powers of 2, let me show you a quick example of how we can convert from base 10 to base 2 much faster. Let's take a look at, at the value 11 whose binary form is 1011. To go from 11 to this binary number, what we think of is the biggest power of 2 that is smaller than 11. In our case, that is number 8, as shown here. So I'm going to put a 1 that represents the 8. And I'm going to keep this 8 in my mind as a running sum. Then I think of the next bigger power of 2 that is smaller than 8. In this case, it's 4. If I add 4 and 8, I go to 12, which means I will go over 11. So I do not want the 4, so I will put a 0 for 4. Then the next value that is, small, that is a power of 2 that is smaller than 4 is going to be 2, as shown here. So if I add 8, which I have it as a running sum, plus 2, I'm going to get 10, which means I'm still smaller than 11. So that's a good thing, so I will put a 1 for a 2. And then the next one, which is the last one, is going to be the next power of 2 smaller than 2, which is 1. And in that case, if I add 10 plus 1, 10 being my running sum, I'm going to get 11, which just so happens to be the sequence that we have come up with. Okay, now let's talk about one more last thing before we wrap up with this video. So just like we did earlier, we had some numbers in base 10, and we had their binary representation. Now I want to talk to you about the base 16 number system, also called the hexadecimal number system. Just how we did earlier, let's start counting. So we go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm able to do that because base 16 means it can re represent 
16 numbers, the first 16 numbers, only using one digit. So this number system has more characters to represent numbers or more digits to represent numbers than our normal decimal number system. Okay, well, how exactly do we do that? It means we would need particular symbols in order to represent the next number. So the next number after 9 is 10. But I cannot write 10 because remember, the next number has to be represented by only one digit as it is the base 16 number. So therefore, the next six numbers have to have a symbol in order for me to represent them uniquely. One way to do that would be for us to create symbols in order to represent the next six digits. However, remember, we have to then write some kind of bit sequence to represent these numbers or these this symbols in the computer. Therefore, the easiest way to do this is to actually use symbols that already exist. And it just so happens that the, those symbols that already exist are the alphabet. So for us, in order to complete the hexadecimal requirement for 16 digits, we use A, B, C, D, E, and F in order to represent 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And just like we did before is once we get to F, which in our case is 15 in decimal, in order to go to 16 in hexadecimal, well, we reset the right side and we start with a new digit on the left. And then we continue to count. One, one. We do not call it 11, as 11 is really our decimal number here. In this case, we just call it 1-1. One, one. Then we keep going all the way to reach 1-F, which would be which will be equivalent to 2-F. And as we keep going all the way to FF, -F, we will end up with 1-0-0. Zero, zero. Okay, so counting works the same way. Now you're probably wondering, why do we even need hexadecimal? The whole point of us using binary is that we only have two digits to represent inside of a computer. Why are we using hexadecimal? Well, let me explain to you with a very quick and small example. Imagine that you get some kind of code from somewhere, and they give you this, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Now, what we have here is 2 bytes, or 16 bits. This doesn't necessarily have to be a number. It could be 2 characters. It could be something completely different. Remember, how we use these bits is up to us, how, what we represent, what kind of data we want to represent with these bits. But imagine that you get this from the computer. Would you know right away what it is? I mean, maybe if you saw it many, many times, but the fact that you have 16 digits and all of them look almost exactly alike since you only have zeros and ones, it's hard to recognize what exactly you're seeing. So to overcome that, what was decided was that we could use hexadecimal in order to convert binary so that we can better see machine code. So that we, when we see this binary sequence, this sequence of bits, if we instead of looking at this sequence of bits as binary numbers or binary digits, if we saw them as hexadecimal digits, we would be much easier be able to recognize what we're looking at. And it just so happens that converting from binary to hexadecimal is way easier than converting binary to decimal. Precisely because hexadecimal, base 16, is a power of 2. And remember earlier we used the fact that we were dealing with powers of 2 in order to convert from base 2 to base 10. But because base 16 is a power of 2, it is way easier to convert from binary to hexadecimal. So let me show you. So the biggest digit in hexadecimal was 15, which is an F. And this just happens that it is represented by four ones. So every four binary bits we can use to represent one hexadecimal bit and vice versa. One hexadecimal bit uh, digit can be used to represent four binary bits. So if I get this sequence of bits that we have here and I group them in fours, you will realize that I can very easy convert this to hexadecimal. For example, the first sequence, if we use our previous method, we said that this would be what? One, two, and if we add them together, we get 7. Now, what is 7 in hexadecimal? We already know that's just 7. Okay, the next one is going to be 2 and 4. 
which that just happens to be 6. Okay, that's also 6 in hexadecimal. Then the next one is 1 and 2. So 1 and 2, that equals to 3. And the last one is 2 and 8. So let me put the 2 and the 8. And if we add those, we get 10. And what did we say 10 is in binary? 8. So now, if you were to get the top sequence of bits or the bottom sequence of hexadecimal digits, which one would you quickly grasp? Which one would you be able to look at and say, oh, I know what this is. Imagine this is an error code or imagine this is some kind of representation of some, of, some kind of data. By simply looking at the hexadecimal bits, you're able to grasp what this binary sequence is. Whereas if you look at only binary sequence, you probably wouldn't be able to. And converting to decimal is quite tedious as we've seen in the previous example. So my question to you is, which one is better, number one or number two? Well, we have all agreed that number two is better. So therefore, what we do is we like to represent binary sequence or a sequence of bits or binary numbers in hexadecimal because for us humans, it is way easier to look at and quickly grasp. Whereas if we were to look at sequence of bits, that might take us much, much more longer time to comprehend. Do note that I only gave you two bytes. Why if you had a file with hundreds and hundreds and thousands of bytes? That would be a lot of ones and zeros to see, and it would be very difficult for you to understand something about this file. It could be done. I'm not saying it can't, but for simplicity purposes, a lot of this binary code gets converted to hexadecimal for us humans to read. And there's some advantages to that. We do not need to think of powers of two in order to do this big number conversions. We do not need to do divisions in order to convert from decimal to binary. If we look at hexadecimal and we look at binary, it's an easy way for us to see machine code and understand what is going on underneath. And that is it. Hexadecimal is only for us humans. There is no reason, like there is no computer system that understands hexadecimal. Everything goes back and gets converted to binary, but we use it for us humans. Now, if you are feeling brave or are bored and would like to look at something else, I would like to give you some homework. If you have a chance, I want you to look at the octal number system or the base 8 number system. As you can imagine, probably, you will realize that base 8 is also a power of 2, and it's an easy way to also convert binary code to another number system that is more readable to us humans, of course. Uh, well, I'll, I'll let you look into more details, but octal is also a number system that sometimes gets used inside of some programming language or some kind of code, uh, but mostly I would have seen hexadecimal and, of course, well, binary uh, sequence of bits. I hope you found this video useful. If you did and, do you, and you don't mind, drop a like. If you like these kinds of videos, if you are looking to learn more about programming and C++, check out the channel, subscribe for this video series, and if you like other kinds of programming code, uh, programming videos and tutorials, check it out, and don't forget to subscribe. Be safe and peace out.